Greetings, programs and users. It is time once again for another episode of Old Nerds Drinking. I am John Patrick, the Master Control Program. Here with me again is Rojan. Greetings, everybody. Happy coming hot. Well, summer's over with Halloween's not quite here yet. So. Yes, we, we, are, <laughs> we are in the slow death of mosquito season, which is my favorite time of year. I, you know what? Like, I could have this time of year all year long. I'm not a big super heat guy. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Um, fall, fall is my season. Like, hoodies, yeah. cool weather. I am all about fall. Fire, you know, backyard fires, the whole thing. It's all, I, I'm all about that shit, you know. Ro- roasting my ass off in the summertime, nah, not my thing. Mm, so. Yeah. Yeah, anyways. Yeah, so. I'm just anxious for Halloween to get here and fall to get here and, you know, plus all the shit that's coming to be watched on the future here. Right. But uh, we are old nerds, and we are drinking. Ro, Jim, what are you drinking? I am drinking a, a I have been, it's called many things. I was told it was called a snake bite, but it's basically a half glass of Guinness and a half glass of Angry Orchard Cider. Hmm. You've ever had that before? No, I haven't. I'm not being, oh, it's good. Man, I haven't been a cider guy since like I first got married in my 20s when I was still, beer had still hurt me, and I, I hadn't gone back to beer yet. Yeah. So I was into, I remember distinctly in my early 20s, finding woodchuck hard cider. And that was the thing that was in my fridge for a long, long time. I suppose any cider would work, but it seems like, like Angry Orchard's got the sourness and the sweetness to offset the Guinness stout really well. And it looks really cool because half of the glass is the stout and the other half of the glass is the hard cider because they have a different densities, so they don't quite mix properly. There's so many weird drinks out there that are half Guinness and something else. Well, Guinness has got the heaviness and the bitterness and the sweetness to offset a lot of things. I, I tried this at Buffalo Wild Wings. I was with a buddy of mine, and he was like, yeah, and he ordered one up, and I'm like, that sounds really good. What's it like? He goes, it's kind of like a candy apple, but it's not. And that's the only way I could really describe it, too. It doesn't taste like a candy apple, but it's it kind of is. There's really no other way to put it. Hmm. I love them. I think they're delicious, but I don't have them very often because they're loaded with calories. It's Guinness, the beer that eats like a meal. Uh, I am drinking the Finnish Long Drink. I don't know if you've seen, like, there's been Facebook ads all over for this thing. It comes in a little blue can, and it's the Finnish Long Drink, Legend of 1952. The Legend. Long Drink is a top-selling category of alcohol in Finland, now available in America. The roots of this Long Drink go all the way back to the 1952 Summer Games in Finland. Because when I think of summer... I think of Finland. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when the co- I, I think of Vikings and stuff like that, me, you know, et cetera. Yeah, I was going to say, I think of the Finnish Winter War and Simu Heha, but... Uh, or your hot skiing chicks or something like right. that. Um, the country of only 4 million people was still recovering from the Second World War. Concerned with how to serve drinks quickly enough to all the visitors, the government commissioned the creation of a relatively new liquor drink. And so the first long drink was born. Now this legendary taste has finally been brought to America by the next generation of Finns who want the world to experience the refreshing and unique Finnish long drink. So it's basically um, uh, gin with natural grapefruit and juniper berry flavors and carbonation, which is a long way of saying it's squirt. It is. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> it's alcoholic squirt. And a buddy of mine brought it to uh, our game night or a couple of months back. And I I love this, man. This is this is like a new new good summer drink for me. So I am curious to try it because I, I do like squirt. Yeah. So, you know, it's I, I've and I have often wondered what could I what alcohol could I mix with this to make something cool with it? Uh, traditionally, squirt is usually mixed with tequila, having partied with a lot of a lot of Mexicans. Uh-huh. Uh, squirt is a traditional cutter for, for tequila. But the, the three big mixers seem to be tequila, vodka, and um, I want to say bourbon, but, well, it depends. Like, yeah, whiskey. We we'll well, say whiskey. Here, here's the thing. is uh, Vodka is what you put in other things when you want to add alcohol to them because it pretty much has no flavor unless that flavor is vodka. Uh, so it's like, oh, I want... Red Bull to have alcohol in it. I add vodka. Hey, I want uh, this squirt to to have alcohol in it. I will add vodka. Uh, Tequila, it's usually the squirt is what you use to cut really, really cheap tequila 
uh, and basically just to kill the flavor of the tequila. Unrelated, I'm about ready to fire my still up pretty soon and make another batch of moonshine. Where grass is growing, water's flowing, a free and easy <laughs> way. Oh, give me enough of the fine old stuff that's made near Galway Bay. I mean, I just, I just want to sit there while you fire up the still and sing like traditional hillbilly and Irish moonshine uh, songs. Well, you're very, you're more than welcome to to distill it with me. The, the actual process of making the stuff that you distill isn't isn't that exciting. But mm-hmm. if you want to sit down when I fire up the still, we could we could do that. I could set it up in the backyard, or I could set it up in the basement, and yeah. you know, because it's electric still, it's not a, it's not a, a fire powered one. So and and and, you know. and drink up that sweet sweet mountain tay. <laughs> sure. <Yeah. laughs> Have uh, you ever actually had my moonshine before? It's it, no, I don't know. I've had some of your moonshines because you, it's you, really strong. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, because I remember you you gave me some of your moonshine and I started drinking it, and then you you were really amazed that I didn't feel anything. That's pretty amazing. I'm still amazed by that. Yeah. So I mean, well, yeah, we could do that. Yeah, le- we might like, actually. You know what? I got an idea. This this makes me think of something. I think at some point. I should make the moonshine. The still, I, I'll, I'll hook it all up. I'll hook the still up, and we can actually record a live in-person episode. You know, we can do it in my backyard, sitting around the fire or something like that. We'll have the uh, mobile setup going on the picnic table while the while the moon by the while the still is going and doing its thing. Yeah, we can do you that. Um, That'd be a good idea. Yeah. So now, Anyways. so now that we have our drinks, well, uh, okay, yeah. Traditionally, uh, we're gonna pour one out for Her Majesty the Queen. Absolutely. God rest Queen Elizabeth II. Long have you reigned, and long have you kept that twit Charles out of the throne. It's funny. Me and a friend of mine were laughing. We're like, it's kind of funny because she she was in the throne for 70 years, and oh, yeah. now King Charles is in charge. So he's going to be in the throne for like 20 minutes or something like that. <laughs> well, and I mean, that was it. It was, she could have abdicated the throne years ago, but she flat out refused to just to spite her own son because as in her own words he married that whore oh yes i forgot about that her reign may have been filled with controversy and you know ireland is still probably drinking in celebration but god bless it the memes have been fantastic they really have they really have yeah so click oh yeah There was that story um, that we were talking about off the air where I believe it was one of the kings, uh, Saudi Arabia, I believe it was. He was visiting the queen. So, yeah, it was the it was the uh, sheik. Uh, I, I believe it's a sheik. Uh, yes. But of Saudi Arabia. Uh, and was, women aren't allowed to drive there. Yeah, w- women so. aren't allowed to drive. So he thinks he's going to get a, uh, a uh, tour of Windsor Palace with the queen. And, you know the 70 year old queen mother or the queen gets behind the wheel and is like, nah, fam, I'm, I'm driving. And as someone who learned how to drive driving ambulances in world war two, London during the blitz, you know, she's a pretty damn good driver. Uh, and he basically had to bitch out and ask his translator to tell the queen to slow it down a bit. Well, that and women aren't allowed to drive in Saudi Arabia. Oh yeah. So she knew that. Mm-hmm. She knew. Oh yeah. You know, that, that was that was that was a direct fuck you from the queen. Absolutely. Everything that I've read, the woman had a really quick wit. She was really funny. She was really into James Bond. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe she was also in, actually into the band Queen. Um, when Live Aid played, and Queen was on the stage, she made it a point to be there to it. From what I've read, I don't know how true that is. So. Oh yeah, and um, for her. Her Diamond Jubilee or whatever that happened um, just a couple of years ago or last year, I think. Brian May and the Queen Survivors played and they, she did this wonderful little skit with a CGI Paddington bear where they're both having tea and marmalade. And then all of a sudden she starts clinking the glass and it's We Will Rock You. Mm-hmm. Where was it? There was some kind of an event where the guy that was uh, I, I'm having a stroke, the guy who just got done playing Bond, uh, um, Daniel Craig. Yeah, Daniel Craig. She did this little skit with her and Daniel Craig and, and her corgis, um, like a James Bond oriented skit or something like that. But she was, you know, she she, she had a real funny wit to her and everything. Oh yeah, so. yeah. Or like yeah. Uh, when she w- during COVID when she gave an address to the uh, the nation and did it in a chroma key green dress, and mm-hmm. the the internet was blessed with that for at least a few days. 
So, yes, uh, fare thee well, Queen, and uh, hopefully the afterlife will be just as good as you as the material world was. Yeah, it's just actually things, just things are going to whole drink talking about her. <laughs> I was about to say things are about to get real interesting for Harry, who's now got to shove dollar bills down the g-string of strippers that have his dad's face on it instead of his grandma's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, what are we talking about tonight, my friend? Oh, man, we have. Let's start with She-Hulk. Well, no, 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 no. First, first, we have a uh, point of order as well. Um, My credit card informed me that uh, the first week of September, uh, the domain name registration for OldNerdDrinkings.com renewed. So this is officially our second year anniversary of the idea of Old Nerds Drinking and the OldNerdsDrinking.com domain uh, started... I believe September 9th of two years ago was when I finally got my ass together and started all the process for us to do the podcast. Wow. Yeah, Damn. two years. And and we've kind of almost been regularly recording for most of that. Yeah, well, you got a different job. I got a different job. You know, um, for, for starting out as a COVID project when I was basically unemployed, I mean, we, I've done the best I can to keep it going. Yeah. Two years, man. I haven't touched my podcast in almost a year. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> it's it's just been the way things are. I'm I'm hoping to get mine fired back up in November um, and start getting the ball rolling on that. I think what's going to have to happen, though, is I'm probably just going to like do the fall, winter, spring thing and take summer off from it. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Because you know. Sergey Wackenoff would love to come back and, and be a correspondent again. Um, That... That could be a possibility that it's been a little well, it's been a little while since I've done any kind of a show at all. But I, I, I've got a few in mind and one of them would be the humor show. I'm considering bringing back this year in fecal matters because Jake and Tom really aren't doing their show anymore. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know. I'm just I'm just, anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm that's sl- my show, not yours. I'm Keep slowly going, <laughs> I'm slowly killing off other podcasts and taking their hosts for my own. <laughs> well, you're not necessarily taking those two. Those two love being here. Like, if they can be here, they will be here. Oh yeah. At this point, so you know, if it, it, I guess at this point, it would be okay to consider them as fellow co-hosts of the right. show. They, so, they're, they're friends of the podcast. Yeah, they're they're in the extended family. That's for sure. I think we had the last episode we recorded. Either was She Hulk just coming out? Did we talk about the first episodes of She Hulk? I don't think we did. But even if we did. There's been enough that's happened since that episode yeah. that we can easily talk about it a little bit. Because we got uh, we got She-Hulk dropped, and then the week after She-Hulk dropped, uh, Rings of Power dropped. Mm-hmm. Haven't seen that yet. I have started watching the new Game of Thrones show, though. <sighs> I can't. I really can't. The, the last season of the Game of Thrones show was so bad, I just can't bring myself to watch it. I'm like I'm. I don't want to invest as much time as I invested in the first stage or the first Game of Thrones show, only to have them fuck up the ending so bad that it it, it literally just killed it for me. I have no interest. Well, I don't hold that against HBO or the show. It was the directors. They really did not want to come back and do more Game of Thrones, so they were kind of being douches. It's like, all right, the very last season is here. Can you suck it up and do this for a full season of shows? They were like, no, we're only going to do this many, and that's it. So they really had to truncate the story down. Well, and and... I mean, mean, that's fucking what's going on with the Game of Thrones book series. It's just like it's bloated to a point where the ending isn't in sight, and there's just so much going on that George R.R. Martin has no idea how the fuck to wrap everything up. Um, and that's that's just a trope of fantasy in general is like it happens in so many fantasy series where the series will just start to get so bloated with story and it'll start tipping towards the end. And then it's just like this last minute rush of, oh, fuck, we got to we got to finish up everything. That's that's what happened to well, the prequel trilogies is like they the Clone War or Attack of the Clones and the Phantom Menace had no idea what the fuck they're doing. So then along comes Revenge of the Sith, and it's like, oh, fuck, we got one movie to wrap all this shit up. We basically well, just started telling the story in the second movie. The, the problem there was nobody was there to tell George Lucas, no, this is a bad idea. <laughs> so that's yeah. that's that that's a kind of diff- that's a different situation. Whereas with Game of Thrones, 
R. R. Martin himself said no. He goes, I, he goes, there was, he goes, in his mind, there was no need to end the show. He's, he said he could have kept it going on for another five, ten years. Easily, oh yeah, his yeah. Mind. So he had, he, he didn't even like the way that it ended. You know, nobody did. It was, it was the people literally. That were running the show. Nobody liked the ending. It was like it, it's great because you see those lists all the time of like the worst final episodes of TV shows. And it always goes back to like old stuff, like the the last episode of MASH, the last episode of Roseanne, the ending of St. Elsewhere. And now you're starting to see Game of Thrones creep onto that list. Well, you know, anytime a show comes to an end, nobody ever likes the ending. It happened with Lost. It happened with The Sopranos. Anytime a show ends, like the okay, only show wait, that wait, I wait, wait, that... wait, 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 no, 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 no. We, we, we gotta, we gotta, like, Lost, Lost, no. Lost was... The beginning, like the first season of Lost was possibly the best season of television that's happened in the last 30 years. And then everybody fell in love with it and everybody was trying to guess what it was. And then it's like the big theory was like, oh, they're all dead and the island is purgatory. And then the, the writers were like, no, 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 that's not it. That's not it. That's absolutely not it. And then you get to the fucking last episode and it's like, yep, they're all dead and this has been purgatory the whole time. And it's just like, fuck you. Fuck you for doing that. For us guessing that. And you're like, no, no, it's going to be so good. It's going to be so epic. And you couldn't figure out how to end it. So you did what you told us it wasn't. I fucking well, the same hate thing Lost. happened with the second, the, the, the new iteration of the Star Trek movies where they did the second one. Where um, oh, it's not going to be the it, Wrath of Khan. It's not going to be Wrath of Khan. It's yes. not going to be Wrath of Khan. Gonna, oh, it's Wrath it's of Khan. It's totally fucking Khan. But no, it's different. This time around, Captain Kirk dies instead of Spock. And it's like, fucking seriously? For real? Like, that actually, that pissed me. Most of this stuff, I just go, yeah, whatever. That actually pissed me off. That was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, why? Because the whole purpose of the new Star Trek movies was to do new stories and new places New yeah, things and, and nope, yeah. nope. It's just rehashing the same shit. Yeah. So the following movie they did was much better because it was a new story and everything. And and and, we, and Christopher Pine got his contractually obligated motorcycle ride. Exactly. For, um, for no, which reminds me, no you still haven't watched reason. Strange, you still haven't watched Strange New Worlds yet, have you? Nope. But oh, I, it's fantastic. I, but I did finally power through uh, season two and uh, until re- uh, the most recent episode of Lower Decks. And God, I've been enjoying that. I still have yet to watch that. Oh, my, I haven't had time. Oh, my God. <laughs> In the second episode of the third season, they're literally playing a tabletop role playing game where they are all Klingon warriors. And there's a digital game master and it's General Martok. And it's actually voiced by the actor who played Martok. Okay. <laughs> and, and I just love it. It's like you roll dice randomly. You fall on your batleth and you die. Dishonor to you and your entire house. I need to watch it. I just haven't had time. Oh, it's so good. So, good. so okay. Uh, She-Hulk. All right. All right so uh... She-Hulk. We are now at, uh, I think, episode five of She-Hulk. I think that, that might dropped be what yesterday. It is. It, it seems like it's a lot further along, but yes. Because I, uh, well, and I don't even know how many episodes there are. I think there's only supposed to be, well, let's, let me, let me check right now. Let me see how many there's supposed to be. Um, nine. There's okay. going to be nine episodes. Nine. And does it say what episode we are at? No, no, actually, no, we're on episode five. The next one drops on episode, on September 22nd. So we're okay, on episode so, five. So I, I was right. Yesterday's episode was episode five. Correct. Um, so what's, what's your hot take on it? Okay, first off, I do like the show. Um, it it is it's got some good comedic funny points in it. She does act the way that She Hawk acted in the comic books. Um, I I don't like the sh- I actually like Miss Marvel the one before it a lot better. I still um, haven't finished watching that. But this show is definitely geared towards women. It's geared towards people like my wife and stuff, which is one hundred and ten percent fine. It's nice to see that the comic book community is is embracing the fact that women are out there, that they do, that women are superhero comic book fans, that, you know, I, I get all of that and I applaud what Disney is doing. I, I don't like the fact that Disney took so long to do it and they've kind of done it ham-fistedly. But the problems that I have with the show are, number one, the big problem for me, I, I don't care about her twerking. That didn't bother me. 
none of the stuff that people are complaining about bothers me, except for one complaint. And I'll start with that one first. For, for the record, I have three notes in my little list of notes for She-Hulk, and it is a lighter side of Marvel, all the cameos, and the twerk heard round the world. So the twerk did not bother me at all. Um, because, again, this this is something that the She-Hulk character would do. Well, and it's... The, I, there have I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off. In the meme sphere, there's all these people who are posting memes of like, oh, well, all Marvel fans getting butthurt about the twerking. No, and we're not. <laughs> and then it, sh- well, no. And then it shows a panel of the She-Hulk comic book where something far more sexist than just the twerking is happening. Yeah. Um, like, oh, Stan Lee would never stand for like this level of sexual pandering in a uh, Marvel property. And then it shows a picture of the Marvel animated series, Stan Lee's stripperella. Yeah. Yeah. That, let's not forget kids. That was a thing that happened. None of that bothers me, but what does bother me is a, the animation is just jarring. Like it's so like when I look at her, it's there's, there's points in the show where the animation is just so bad and it annoys me because this is Disney. They have the money. They've done good animation before. They did it, you know, like when, when we had the Mandalorian, Luke Skywalker showed up and the animation was fucked up. We said, who cares? It's Luke Skywalker. This is what we wanted. And then we got the book of Boba Fett and they had Luke Skywalker in it again. It, it looked a lot better. So it's like Disney can do better. They can do better on these shows. It's like, why aren't you? I'll so the jarring it. animation bugs me really bad. Oh, yeah. It, I, I, it, it, I didn't it just even... kills me. I didn't even think that the animation was that bad. I, I've actually been, I didn't even notice it. It bugs me. The other thing that I don't like about the show is that we're five episodes in and outside of the fact I get she's an attorney, I get she's trying to deal with the fact that she's She-Hulk now. I understand all that, but I don't know outside of that what the show was about. I don't know who the main um, antagonist is. I don't know what the backstory of it is. There's been no overarching, like where, what is this series besides her being an attorney and besides her trying to deal with the fact that she's a superhero now and her personal life and stuff. What is, is the bad guy, the abomination is so, the bad guy, Titania. If that's um, the case, what is the, with every story that they've done thus far, we have a very clear indication of who the bad guy is and what the overarching story is. I don't get any of that from watching She-Hulk. It's again, it's funny. I enjoy it. The jokes are funny. So the breaking I think, the fourth wall, but everything else is just like, what's going on here? Even I, I, my wife okay. said that. She's like, I don't here's the thing. I, I think you're going to need to go back and relook because if you look at all the Marvel shows, there is no overarching bad guy. You didn't find out who the bad guy was. Like, you didn't even find out there was a bad guy in WandaVision until, like, the second to the last episode when we got It's Agatha. I know, but in uh, WandaVision, you knew something weird was going on. You knew there was something going in the background that was yeah. fucking with her. There was an overarching larger story that you were trying to piece together. You knew something was there. Yeah, and and in Captain America and the Winter Soldier, it's like... They there were the flag smashers. They weren't the bad guy. There was the there was Captain America Coors Light. He was not really the bad. There wasn't really a there. Zemo wasn't even really the bad guy. No, but there was. They had to have. They, they there was a major overarching problem. There was something to grab onto right, in every one right. of these shows. In, in Le- She Hulk, there's nothing to grab onto. There's no like. In, in, Where is this going? Yeah, in Loki, there wasn't really a bad guy. Like they made out that Sylphie, Sylphie was the bad guy, but then immediately you find out that she's not the bad guy. Correct, right. but in, still, on that point, they're they're always trying to figure out who's running the Time Variant Authority, right? And why is this stuff happening? So there's, again, there they're, is an they're... overarching greater story as to right. what's going on. What is going on in She-Hulk? Tell me, tell me what the story is in She-Hulk. She is coming to terms with being a superpowered being. And every I, episode thus far has been her coming to terms with the duality of her life. At first trying to avoid it, then kind of embracing it. And then in the most recent episode, having to kind of almost be punished for it. Where uh, the other Titania tried to steal her or copyright the identity. 
And her working through that, not as a super powered problem, but you know, as a legal drama. Again, though, these are this is this is a secondary story. We saw that in, in Falcon and Winter Soldier with him having to come to terms with he would have to become Captain but America. That, in this, that's the primary story. Yeah, you're looking. You're looking for the Marvel esque. Like you're like, oh my god, there's got to be some big. Uh, there's got to be some big underhanded villain, but it doesn't have to be that. And you're ignoring the orig- What is the main point? Thinking that's a secondary point because it's just not what we're used to. Uh, that, okay, that if that's the case, then then no, I don't like it then. <laughs> and that's like, that is a perfectly case, valid point. Um, I enjoy it. Um, I can't say I have any real complaints about it. Uh, I enjoy the cameos. I enjoy a lighter Marvel show. I enjoy something that it's not dark. It's like, God damn it. Sometimes I just want a sitcom. And that's really what this is. This is a Marvel sitcom. It, it is a, uh... it meets almost all the tests of a situational comedy. Just there's not a canned laugh track. I, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I dig it or not. Like, I do like the cameos, um, but they, I mean, that, it kind of bugs me that they have to have these here to keep the story going. And the show is even self-aware of it. She's like, oh, yeah, every, there's Wong. Everybody's happy Wong is here. Right. Now, you know, when Daredevil comes on the show, they're going to make it a point to say, oh, look, here's Daredevil. Now everybody's happy about that. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's kind of like, eh, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. Um and it's again, it's nothing to do that it's a female character. I, I could give a fuck if she's twerking. I don't um, that like that's there's no there's no sexistism to it at, at all coming from a dude. I'm sure that's that doesn't sound you know convincing, but I just don't. It's just missing something for me, and I don't. And if that's what the show is, is just her coming to terms with her superpowers. To me, that's a secondary story that goes on in the background as she's trying to deal with something greater. And there's just nothing greater here for me. Like even my wife said, okay, this is great, but what is what what is the show about? Like and it's made for women, at least I think it is. So <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm being a little bitch, but mm-hmm. again, I mean I'll take it. I'm not gonna say it sucks and I don't want to see it. Any anything that we get from Marvel or, or or Star Wars, I'm paying it money every month to see it, and I'm happy that I'm getting it. And I also fully understand that not every show can be a home run. And I'm comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. And this just this just might be my least favorite of all of them thus far. And and I can live with it. I mean, it's, it's not like I'm like, I'm never watching Marvel shows on Disney again. Mar- Marvel ruined, you know, there's Disney ruined Marvel. That's not it at all. No. You know, the next show is going to come out. And it'll, it might be better. And if it's not, it's not. It's the same as the Star Wars movies. Not every one of them can be what I want. And that's okay. Uh... So... Well, now that you softballed right into Star Wars, um, well, what you were gonna say, your what was your review on the whole uh, She Hulk thing? I, I mean, I, I basically said everything. Is, is I enjoy it. I enjoy kind of that slice of life comedy. Like it literally is a Marvel sitcom, and I'm kind of okay with that. I enjoy having a laugh with the show. I enjoy the act. Uh, like I don't have any notes about the actors or anything. Um, the only thing I have to look into this more uh, in the most recent episode, um, she goes to the guy who is supposedly like the super powered costume guy. Yep. Um, that character existed in Marvel, but in the as I remember him in Marvel, he was like a Jewish tailor in New York and he just happened to be the tailor that all the superheroes went to. Um, I don't know if this is supposed to be that character just as a modern uptake or if this is somebody totally new. Um, they have already said that this was a character specifically created for this show. Okay, yeah, yeah. Then no problem. I mean, it's a different character. Um, I, I remember the story arc of that guy uh, played out in the... Uh, I think it was the Jay Straczynski run of Amazing Spider-Man. And... It started out that he was a tailor and like the Fantastic Four was having a battle in New York City and like the thing's uniform was destroyed. So the thing like walks into this dude's tailor shop and he's got like newspapers wrapped around his waist. And he's like, uh, you got anything in like a size 78? 
and it <laughs> and it just from that point became that he was the superhero tailor to the point where he even said i see i see the heroes on monday tuesday or monday wednesday friday i see the villains on tuesday thursday saturday uh, he talks about like he puts out different magazines when the heroes and villains are there and like when Thor's there, he puts out like uh, Modern Woman and Wedding magazines because Thor is like all about that. The one thing that you didn't catch that I'm surprised about: do do you watch the closing credits of the She Hulk show at all? Uh, the the what? The She Hulk show. Did you ever do you ever watch the closing credits of it? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I I mean I watched the the closing credit scenes. Okay, so this last episode, did you watch what was going on in the background with the tenor shoes? No, because there wasn't a closing. There wasn't an after credit. Uh, no, scene. no, no. Every every episode of She Hulk at the end of it, they have these. Oh like, yeah, yeah. The, the sketches, and he, the one guy, had the wall of tennis shoes, and there were like the red ones that were the the Tony Stark ones. Oh yeah, but on that wall, there was also, if you look really closely, if you stop the frame and you really look at it, there's Thing shoes on the wall. There are Doctor Strange ones on the wall. There's Wolverine ones on the wall. There's all these characters in those shoes on the wall that have not yet appeared in the new Marvel cinematic universe. Oh no, so, I, I, I didn't, I didn't check or I missed that one. Yeah. If you go back and look at it and you freeze the frame and you really take a look at it, somebody was, somebody pointed out, I saw a few of them, but I didn't have a time. I didn't feel like going back and rewinding it, but there are all these different shoes for characters on that wall that have not yet appeared in, in the Marvel universe yet. It's more than just like there's, there's a pair of shoes up there for black Panther but there's um there's a Nova pair of tenor shoes up there. They got the little Nova symbol on it. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's kind of like, um, there's they do in the closing credits. That's the one thing that I've noticed about She Hulk. They're using She Hulk to set up a lot of future stories for other things. Like they've already showed in the last episode. Well, you haven't seen it yet, but there's a scene at the very end of the show. There's a scene in the last episode. No, where... I've, I've I've watched it. I just watched it okay. before we did the show. So, Spoilers here, then. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. They have Daredevil's helmet inside of the little round thing. And he says, do you have no respect for uh, client confidentiality? So now they've set up where Daredevil gets his new costume from, because at the end of the Netflix run of the show, Daredevil didn't have a costume anymore. Mm -hmm. um, there's all these little things that She-Hulk is doing to set up future events in other movies right uh, well and i mean in almost every trailer for she hulk there has been the matt murdoch daredevil and yeah. so we know it's coming we're just kind of waiting for it um and we know he's in the red and gold suit um and they have which is a weird choice in my opinion but they have they have said specifically that the daredevil show is not a continuation of the netflix show uh, it will no. be its own specific story tailored to him now existing in the Marvel Universe. Um, they're just going to, from what I understand, they're going to make casual references. Like they, they've done thus far to all of the Netflix shows. They don't directly reference them, but they casually reference them. And they said that they want to do that because most people have already seen those shows and they don't feel a need to go back and re-reference them again because they're right. supposed to bring Jessica Jones back. But next, after this... Daredevil's next appearance will be in the Echo show. He's supposed to feature very prominently in that. And then when Daredevil Born Again starts, because at the D23, which is, of course, we're going to talk about probably too, yeah. there's a thing on there where um, the guy who plays Kingpin is on stage talking to Kevin Feige. And they're like, well, what do you, what's up? He goes, well, I just want to know if you want to talk about my show. And then the guy who plays Daredevil walks out and goes, don't you mean my show? And then they show this big thing in the background for Daredevil Born Again. But he said, we have no scenes in the show because we haven't started filming it yet. Right. So, you know, so, they're, they're taking their sweet time with it. But I'm OK with that, you know. All right. So so then let's push into the uh, the D23 Expo. Um, this is Disney's official big deal convention of just Disney stuff. Um, and in previous like pre COVID times. Since the Marvel merger, since the Star Wars merger, uh, DC or er, Disney had actually pulled a lot of the announcement that used to be made at Comic Con, and we're now starting to make them at D twenty three. But then this year, Kevin Feige, I believe, specifically made a point to hey, 
no, Comic-Con's a big thing. We kind of need to have a presence at Comic-Con. So this mm-hmm. was the first time in probably four or five years that a lot of stuff got talked about at Comic-Con. But that's not to say it was everything. There was still a lot of stuff that was previewed at D23. And on top of just Disney stuff, but like Star Wars stuff and Marvel stuff. Mm-hmm. So let's go with some of the Marvel stuff first, and then we can talk about the Star Wars stuff. Uh, the two big trailers that dropped were the first look for Secret Invasion with uh, Samuel Jackson and uh, oh, um, Col- Col- Robin. Colby Smothers. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like this is the, this is the Earth versus the Skrull show that we all kind of were like. Wait a minute. And when we watched Miss Mar or uh, Captain Marvel, and we're like, "Wait a minute, Skrulls are good guys?" Uh, no, this this is the Skrulls officially being bad guys, and the whole vibe of, "Hey, anybody could be a Skrull." Yeah, it, yeah. The trailer's good. You like watch the trailer. It, it's very much kind of in that like spy vibe of who can you trust. Um, and this could, I believe, technically be Samuel L. Jackson's last Marvel thing. I believe this is the last thing he's contracted for. Um, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm not really, I'm indifferent to it. I'm going to watch it, obviously. Like I've said, anything that they put on the TV, anything they put on there, I'm going to watch. But I'm just not, I, again, this whole phase of Marvel has just been very meh for me at best. So... I mean, outside of me losing my shit over Moon Knight, but Moon Knight is kind of an is its own thing. So, well, and that's the other thing is they dropped the Werewolf by Night trailer, but I did not see any mention in any way whatsoever of Moon Knight in it, and nope. that's strange because that's where Moon Knight actually first came from. Yeah, so it's um, I'm trying to think. Like, I think they're um. I want to say Jessica Jones was in it, but I can't remember for sure. Um, it's really jarring because it's in black and white and it's kind of like the old, uh, like the old universal monster horror trailers where there, there's kind of just like cutting between scenes and building tension and like, I don't even know how to explain it. But. No, I get it. I get what you're saying. It's, it's, it's like one of those old, you know, it's like the old monster movies. Yeah. You know? Oh, it's like an old Hammer horror film or something like that, which right. I, I think it's cool. I, that's one of the things I do like about what Marvel is doing, though. Each one of these shows has its own particular style and feel, and it's got its own thing to it. Now, here's, which, the, here's the thing. Do you know, is this just going to be a one shot, like two yep. hour special or is this going to be a limited? Is this going to be like a couple episode series? I believe it's just supposed to be a one shot Halloween thing. Let me check on that, though. It's only for it's it's kind of like their Halloween special, which kudos to them for doing. They didn't have to do this. And, it, you know, I think it's pretty cool that they are. I think it's only one episode. Jack Russell, Werewolf by Night. Gee, I wonder if he turns into a terrier. Um, the, uh, OK, a secret group of monster hunters gather at Bloodstone Castle following the death of their leader to engage in a mysterious deadly competition of a po- for a powerful relic, which will begin which will bring them face to face with a dangerous monster. Uh, production development, writing, casting, design, filming. Uh, I think it's only one episode from what I'm seeing. Yeah, it did sound like this had special. Be part of phase four of MCU. Uh, and I'm wondering if that's going to like introduce Blade or anything like that as well. Nope. They specifically said there will be no Blade cameo in it, which I mm-hmm. think is dumb. Yeah, you'd, you'd expect that to be there. At some point or yeah, other, they have to bring him in. I was going to say, that is absolutely one of the places where Blade would end up. Um, but yeah, I, I, I read one of those articles. It's like, what surprising MCU cameo is not going to be in Werewolf by Night? And of course, it's Blade. Well, the writer was one of the writers for WandaVision, one of the writers for Moon Knight, and one of the writers for Hawkeye. All three of those shows were pretty solid shows. Uh, it's special and inspired horror films of the 1930s and 1940s, comparing the film to Poltergeist and that it would have the right level of scares. The special was classified by Disney as a comedy. Feige called the special fun while adding that it is also a little darker and a little scarier than the studio's other content. So it's supposed to be a comedy. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Let's see here. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much. I don't, I don't want to read too much more of it because I don't want to ruin it for myself. Yeah. But I think it's only supposed to be one show. But you know, again, yeah. I'm cool with it. Like I said, whatever they throw on there, I'm gonna watch because hey, I'm paying the monthly fee for it, and this is why I'm paying for it because I want to see this stuff. Mm-hmm. So. <clears throat> so that was. Uh, those were the two big Marvel reveals, and then going into the Star Wars stuff. Uh, first up was the Mandalorian trailer. So uh, we got to see it, it's a lot of footage from the previous seasons and then like a little bit of footage from the next se- uh, the, the coming season. But the big punch in the dick was the fact that it said 2023. So we had planned on the Mandalorian releasing in like Christmas of this year, but it appears it has been pushed back to sometime next year. I don't think it's pushed very far back, though. I don't see it going much further than, like, February or something like that, to be honest with you. And I think, really, there's there's something going on with scheduling because, like, the when Andor drops next week, which looks way fucking cooler than it has any business looking. Like, I am so pumped for Andor. Uh, I really am. Yeah, the next next item on my uh, list is Andor, and the annotation is, holy fuck. Um they're dropping three episodes of Andor next Wednesday, which when they drop Obi-Wan Kenobi, they dropped the first two episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi for Andor. They're dropping three. Mm -hmm. So when they, when they did it for Obi-Wan Kenobi, they did it primarily because it was a scheduling thing and they've got shows that are in the pipe. They didn't want one show to overpass onto another one and take away viewing or whatever. Right. So they didn't want to have, they didn't want to have a Marvel property going at the same time as a, and Disney's um, been pretty consistent about that, where it's like one one show will end and then it will either like there'll be a week or two of overlap and then the next show goes. So it looks yeah. like there'll be a little bit of overlap between the end of She-Hulk and then the start of Andor. But uh, I mean, not much. And then Andor was supposed to roll into uh, Ahsoka, which I don't think they've announced uh, the official release date of Ahsoka. And then Ahsoka was going to run into uh, the Mandalorian. So it makes me wonder if Ahsoka is now going to be pushed back to the spot where the Mandalorian was. And that's going to be the Christmas release. Uh, Don't forget, we've also got Black Panther 2 releasing in November. Yeah, again, so they don't want stuff that's conflicting. See, the thing about Ahsoka is we've seen nothing from Ahsoka at all. So I don't know... You like Mandalorian? We've been getting little bits and pieces of the coming Mandalorian show for a little bit, and nothing from Ahsoka. So mm. I don't know how far into filming it they are or what have you. But I think it's more of what you said of where we've got you've got Black Panther coming out, you've got all uh, the other shows on Disney Plus that are coming out. I think it's more a matter of just of just scheduling. I don't think that there's anything wrong. It's just that there's so many properties out there that they only have so much time that they can play with. Right. But ultimately, I don't think it's going to make a big difference. Like the Star Wars hardcore fans are going to watch. They're going to sit like I can completely see, see somebody on their day off sitting and watching all three of episodes of Andor in a row. Oh, you know, and it's uh, it's, it's me. I'm that guy. Yeah, I would if I had time. Like, if me and my wife could sit down and watch those shows three in a row, we would, you know. But I, I, there's people like you that will. So, ultimately, I, I don't think it's going to make a big bit of difference at all. Yeah, no. <laughs> Everybody's it, like, it's... well, this could mean trouble behind the scenes at Disney, and this could mean that. I'm like, no, I think it's the opposite. That's I've got so much on their plate that yeah. they're trying to juggle things right now. And and I really don't care. Yeah, and, and like everything about like Andor, it was the show I didn't realize I wanted until they showed me the parts of it and it's like yeah. holy crap this is the show I've kind of been waiting for for a long time this is same here a hardcore kind of like serious this is the start of the rebellion this is you know the empire squeezing to the point where the people are just like fuck no we're done and just the normal people kind of rising up and showing the cracks in the imperial system. Like, this is in the old Star Wars expanded universe canon. Um, I've, I've mentioned this before. There's, there was a list of things that you were not allowed to write about. 
And basically the entire time between uh, the Clone... First of all, you were not allowed to write anything about the Clone Wars. Like, the Clone Wars was just off limits. Um, And the entire period between the Clone Wars and A New Hope was off limits. You were not allowed to write anything. So this is... It started in Rebels, but now in this is like we're finally getting that era fleshed out. We're finally seeing what happened, how the Republics or the Rebellion started. Like the this is the gritty story we've been waiting for, and it's gonna tie into Rogue One, which I've argued is possibly one of the best Star Wars films since other than the, the original trilogy. Yeah, I can't I can't say I disagree. Um when I saw it, I was like, holy, like, I, I was like, you know what? I get it, but we already had Rogue One, and mm-hmm. I, I don't like it when people come out with prequels for prequels. And, and, plus, we and, all know what's going to happen. But well, when I and saw that's it, the I thing like, is, is shit. it, it so rarely works out. Like, most of the time, it just creates new shoehorn plots that just don't tell a good, compelling story. And Rogue One was the exception to the rule that it was the prequel, but it fit perfectly. Yeah, it was the missing piece. It, it was the yeah. puzzle perfectly. It filled in some of what was always the glaring plot holes of the Star Wars, the first Star Wars movie, and it filled that in, and it gave reasons for those things to be there. Oh, it was probably my favorite movie outside of the original trilogy. It, it, but the pro, it's, what's funny is this is the Star Wars community. Like, you can't. There's people that hate that movie. They're like, Rogue One has no character development. The story sucks. Blah 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 blah. On and on. Fuck and it's like all of you. Yeah, it's like this is this fits perfectly. I, I don't understand. You know, Princess Leia looked like shit. But then again, it goes back to my point of earlier: is that. It's it's like Marvel. Not every not every Marvel show can be for everybody, and that's what I've come to. And me and you have said it. Just because we don't like something about Star Wars, it doesn't ruin Star Wars for us. You know, like the last couple of movies, I didn't like them, but it doesn't ruin Star Wars for me. And I know that there's people that love those movies, and if they do, that's fine. But can we have what we like? You know, <laughs> right? I will. I, I will say, I... Star Wars, if it's done right, if it's done good, if it's done intelligently, right. and if this looks to be a fantastic fucking story. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it, it develops the character of Mon Mothma. It develops the character of uh, the the one, the one um, like Republic intelligence general that we saw in Rogue One, who was kind of a dick. Um, this is it's developing those characters in a way they hadn't really been developed before. Um, I really hope K2SO is in it uh, just because, you know, anything to keep Alan Turdick working. Uh Uh-huh. Well, I'm wondering also because of when the story takes place and because we have Ahsoka coming down the road and Ahsoka is basically they've said flat out this is going to be the continuation of the Star Wars Rebels cartoon. They've got everybody coming back for it. Oh, yeah. I was going to say they even they 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 announced the casting for Ezra Bridger. And the guy they cast looks like spook, perfect spot on spookily like the comic or the, the cartoon guy. Yes. So what I'm wondering is, are we going to see any of those characters on Andor because of the time frame of the show? And this is this is where it gets weird, though, because uh, Ahsoka is supposed to take place around the Mandalorian timeline. So you've got yeah. what happens before the Mandalorian and then what happens Oh, well, during the Mandalorian. Well, and we do know there were re- there were rebel references in Rogue One. Yep. Um, specifically, uh, you see Chopper in one of the uh, one of the hangar shots, and, and the then, ghost. Uh, no, you don't see the ghost. You see the ghost in Rise of the Skywalker. Well, you do also hear mention they, they, they yeah. mention over the PA system. They, they page General Sindula. Yeah. So they they do reference that, but you don't you don't see the ghost in that one. I um, swear you saw the ghost parked on the ground in the background. No, no, it's, you saw Chopper, uh, like as one of the the R twos that was running around. So yeah, they there. Andor is is I, I'm pumped for that. Um, the other big announcement at uh, at D twenty three for Star Wars 
Actually, what? I'm looking it up right now, not to cut you off, but the ghost is on Yavin 4, the Great Temple, uh, Castle, uh, Case Ander, take off, which I nervous notes to take a look at the top left of the ship uh, platform outside the base of Yavin 4, and that's where you'll find the ghost in the corner. That's where it was. I remember seeing it there. The ghost is also seen on the bridge of Admiral Radzu's ship during a battle. The ghost can be seen several times during the Battle of Scarif. Okay, that, I am mistaken. Um, that's okay. <laughs> so, that's why we check each other. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> so the, the last big thing they revealed was... It actually pissed me off a little bit. Because uh, I was just going through the trailers, and the last thing I saw was Star Wars Tales of the Jedi trailer. And I was like, oh, holy fuck. They're going to do a Tales of the Jedi show. And then I watched the trailer and it's just a bunch of vignettes about uh, the Clone Wars animated series characters. Uh, For those of you who don't remember or aren't that deep of Star Wars nerds, uh, Tales of the Jedi was a comic book series that took place in the very, very distant past of Star Wars. Um, It was one basically the oldest timeline they, they had ever delved with the Star Wars timeline. And it told the story of the first Sith Lords, Exar Kun, um, and the it told the story of the Mandalorian Wars. Uh, so, like, a lot of deep, deep Star Wars lore stuff happened in that show. Um, so I got really excited when I saw Tales of the Jedi, and then when I saw that it was like, oh, it's just a bunch of vignette episodes, like, oh, here's a... Here's a half hour episode that's just Ahsoka. Here's a half hour episode that's Count Dooku before he became an asshole. Mm -hmm. And I I was sad. What I want to see, I I, honestly, I probably won't end up watching that because I haven't watched the the Bad Batch either. Um, Which everybody says, yeah, you should, you should. It all ties together. I'm just not interested in watching it. I watched a couple of episodes of the Bad Batch and just was, yeah, I it, it it's oh what is it? Uh there's a specific name for the trope of like adding a cute kid to a show to just keep relevance. Uh it was from it was a, the the first show that did it I think was the Brady Bunch when they added like cousin Mikey or something and that's what it is. And like every time I see the bad batch and then there's like the little girl it's like oh god why like, like if they just did this as like a bunch of clones who are like a team style, I'd be down. But it's like, oh, there's this like little ten year old kid chasing them around. No, <laughs> this, this, no, yeah. Um, so I haven't watched. I watched like the first three or four episodes. I, I couldn't get into it. Uh, it's just not my bag. I, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying I couldn't get into it. Um, but. Go ahead. Oh, no, you can finish. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Well, well, no, I was going to say, now the other Star Wars news um, was that it wasn't related to D23, but it just kind of broke uh, in the last couple of days. That's the one I sent to you, isn't it? I think I, I I don't remember who sent it to me, but it was that. Yeah, it was in the chat with Jake and Jake and uh, Tom. So, so on the heels of everybody talking about the quiet quitting epidemic in the workplace today, Disney has quiet canceled the Rogue Squadron movie. It's like, oh, up until a few weeks ago, I was reading articles. They're like, oh, yeah, work still progressing on Rogue, or Rogue Squadron. It's still a thing. And then all of a sudden, in the last day or two, it's, nope, Rogue Squadron's been removed from the release schedule. No work's being done on it. It hasn't been officially canceled, but it's not having anything done to it. And I am angry on a level that is righteous nerd fury. Well, to be fair... Well, to be fair... Oh, don't say to be fair. hate when people say to be fair. Oh, to be fair. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. Uh, to be fair. To be fair. Oh, to be fair. Uh, to be fair. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. All of the Star Wars movie projects of any kind have been put on hold or Here's canceled. The thing. Don't fucking care about any of them. 
except Rogue, Rogue Squadron. I have been waiting for a Rogue Squadron something for 30 years. Like, I remember in the 90s, there was a big talk about a live-action TV show of Rogue Squadron, and I was there for it. And then nothing happened for that. And then it was, the Ro we got Rogue Squadron novels, we had the Rogue Squadron comic book, and I'm like, yes, everything about Rogue Squadron, this is the Star Wars I want to see. Star Wars that doesn't have m much of anything to do with Jedi's. There doesn't even need to be any Skywalker bullshit in it. Like, let's tell Star Wars stories of just X-Wing pilots being badasses. You could even just take stock footage of X-Wings from all the other movies and just kind of, you know, space mutiny that footage into a movie and record some live action shots to kind of justify the stock footage. I would be okay with it. And they canceled it. And I'm think furious. That, well, from what I've read, let I me mean, take that back. From what I have read, um, Disney wants to give a little bit of time to pass from the last movies to like the, the, get that taste out of everybody's mouths. Don't and they want the fucking Disney care. Yeah, but we're not we're we're not what what's going on with the average public. So right now, Disney apparently then, Disney give me, has to, give me a Disney Plus series. Rogue Squadron would make an awesome Disney Plus series. And it's, it's very, it, it's, it's, it lends itself to be episodic. It lends itself to be a nonlinear or a linear story that you can tell in eight episodes and then do okay. it an entire another Hear season. Me out. Hear me out. This is, they have a lot of stuff planned that's going to be going on Disney Plus. Now, one of the shows that got canceled, this is the, this is the rumor that's out there and it kind of makes sense. There was supposed to be a Rangers of the New Republic show that they were going to make, yes. and then that kind of got silently canceled. So now you have the Rogue, the Rogue Squadron show movie that got canceled. It would be very easy for them to shift some stuff around and be able to make a Rogue Squadron Disney Plus series by just altering some storylines and doing all that kind of stuff. Because you have the New Republic, you could very easily just swap New Republic, Rangers of the New Republic out with Rogue Squadron and, and it's, you could make a show and like that. the thing is it's, it works in any era. Technically the road, like if, if you follow Expanded Universe Cameo, Rogue Squadron was a squadron in the Old Republic and mm -hmm. when the rebellion started, Luke, Biggs and Wedge named Red Squadron in honor of that squadron which became Rogue Squadron. Uh, mm -hmm. And then it was supposed to be that the Rogue Squadron was going to be named in honor of the Rogue One mission. So, you know, you can do it Rebellion era. You can do it post Star Wars or uh, post original trilogy era. You could do it in the far future prequel trilogy era. You can do Rogue Squadron anytime. Just please, please give me a Rogue Squadron. I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up coming to Disney Plus. It's yeah. it's not at all unfeasible. And they've kind of you've got the two X Wing pilots that keep popping up in the Mandalorian, you know, the co the, the space cops. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 very, very easy for it to be done. So I would not lose hope yet. It's it's um it could be very easily done. That's all I'm saying. So I wouldn't worry about it. What I was gonna say earlier, what I wanna see Eventually, when all of this stuff boils down and things settle down in the Star Wars universe, I still want a series of Old Republic movies. I want yeah. I want to see it, it, I either want a series of Old Republic movies or I want a series of movies far ahead of what happened in the last movies where and they've mentioned they could do this where Grogu is now a Jedi master or Grogu has since learned the force. You could bring Ray back. You could bring Ray yeah. back, you know, the he will outlive the the sequel trilogy. Um, you figure he's in his, he's under a hundred years old, and he's still basically a toddler. Yeah. Um, which means by the time the sequel trilogies happen, he still would be a youngling. He mm -hmm. he, he still would not have matured because if if Yoda is nine hundred, and he's an old man. You figure for every 10 years of human life, that's 100 years of Muppet species life. Exactly. So you could very easily 
continue to do a show and Chewbacca could be there. Because uh, Wookiees live a great, they, they live a long yeah, time. Look, look, you know, Wookiees live a couple hundred years. Um, so you've got, you could still do, you could do the droids. BB-8, R2, C-3PO could probably still be there at some way or function or other. The Millennium Falcon could easily be there because it's a ship. It doesn't, it's not going to grow old and die. Right. But you could do further down the road, a continuation of these stories you know, about about the new Jedi Order being rebuilt from the people that are out there and things. Or, so if I don't get that, I still want an Old Republic movie of some kind. Yeah, I, going I would way like back, to telling see all those stories. Yeah, either an Old Republic series or um, the new era they're trying to develop, the High Republic series. I wouldn't mind seeing that. I would just like to see something in a movie other than Skywalker family bullshit. Well, if... If Ray comes back, it's going to be Skywalker because she's claimed herself to be a Skywalker. But they could very easily just now they could let go of all that baggage. Now, yes, she's a Skywalker, whatever. She's not tied to that family, so they could very easily just gloss over that and keep on going. That wouldn't be a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, yeah. All I'm saying is don't lose hope on Rogue Squadron because everybody wants this, and it just seems really strange that. You know, they had they had the director all picked out and everything, and she can direct it. It's, oh, yeah. it's, it's all they very made, possible. They made a hype trailer. They made an honest-to-God fucking hype trailer yeah, for Patty her Jenkins. Sitting inside yeah. of an X-Wing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, oh. So, I'm just saying, it, it's very... I, I, to be honest with you, if you're going to do Rogue Squadron, I honestly would rather Siri, see it as a series so the story has more time to be told. It doesn't have to be truncated it, into a couple of movies. Mm. You know, there's, I, I do like the long form <laughs> shows much better. Oh, uh, I just, I just realized like we kind of got a rogue squadron movie. They just called it Maverick. <laughs> I still have not seen that movie. <laughs> you don't have to, you've seen star Wars. It's just star Wars. Like I have seen a almost scene for scene breakdown of like how Maverick basically stole the plot of Star Wars. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, you know what? I probably will watch it. I, I I probably will watch Maverick. There's a list of movies. Nope is one of them. I'm definitely gonna watch. Oh, nope. I, yeah. Like I heard some pe- like I heard people saying it wasn't that good, and it's like mm. everything that I've seen about it, and everybody that I respect movie wise has all told me, yes, you should see this. I was gonna say it's it, good. It looks and pretty plus in- it's right up my alley. It's UFOs. It's paranormal. Right. You know. Um. Yeah, I was gonna say it looks hype. Greetings, programs and users. It is I, John Patrick, the Master Control Program, live from the edit suite. We're going to cut the episode here. Ro and I still go on for about another half hour, but I'm going to save that for a part two episode. So I hope you enjoyed part one, and we will have part two to you in the very near future. But until then... End of line. Over? Did you say over? Over? Nothing is over until we decide it is. Was it over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? Hell no! German? Forget it, he's rolling. It ain't over now. So, what's the plan? Take off, go to Mums, kill Phil, sorry, grab Liz, go to the Winchester, have a nice cold pint, and wait for all this to blow over. Might as well write them off. Let's close up the bridge. Let's get out of here. Close it up. Lights out. Where are you headed, cowboy? Nowhere special. Nowhere special. I always wanted to go there. We're going streaky! All right, come on, nothing to see here, please disperse, nothing to see here.